Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is August 22nd, 2020. And this is an audiobook of Stalin's The Possibility of Building Socialism in Our Country, a reply to Comrade Pokoyev. The source is J.V. Stalin Works, Volume 8, 1926, published by Foreign Languages Publishing House, Moscow, 1954. Transcription by Brian Reed, published at Marxist's Internet Archive in 2008. That is Marxists.org, an invaluable resource um, for Marxists. Many, many free uh, books and and all kinds of interesting things on there. Please go check out Marxists.org. Okay, so let's get into the audiobook. Comrade Pokoyev, I am late in replying, for which I apologize to you and your comrades. Unfortunately, you have not understood our disagreements at the 14th Congress. The point was not at all that the opposition asserted that we had not yet arrived at socialism, while the Congress held that we had already arrived at socialism. That is not true. You will not find a single member in our party who would say that we have already achieved socialism. That was not at all the subject of the dispute at the Congress. The subject of the dispute was this. The Congress held that the working class, in alliance with the laboring peasantry, can deal the finishing blow to the capitalists of our country and build a socialist society, even if there is no victorious revolution in the West to come to its aid. The opposition, on the contrary, held that we cannot deal the finishing blow to our capitalists and build a socialist society until the workers are victorious in the West. Well, as the the victory of the revolution in the West is rather late in coming, nothing remains for us to do, apparently, but to loaf around. The Congress held, and said so in its resolution on the report of the Central Committee, that these views of the opposition implied disbelief in victory over our capitalists. That was the point at issue, dear comrades. This, of course, does not mean that we do not need the help of the West European workers. Suppose that the West European workers did not sympathize with us and did not render us moral support. Suppose that the West European workers did not prevent their capitalists from launching an attack upon our republic. What would be the outcome? The outcome would be that the capitalists would march against us and radically disrupt our constructive work, if not destroy us altogether. If the capitalists are not attempting this, it is because they are afraid that if they were to attack our republic, the workers would strike at them from the rear. That is what we mean when we say that the West European workers are supporting our revolution. But from the support of the workers of the West to the victory of the revolution in the West is a long, long way. Without the support of the workers of the West, we could scarcely have held out against the enemies surrounding us. If this support should later develop into a victorious revolution in the West, well and good. Then the victory of socialism in our country will be final. But what if this support does not develop into a victory of the revolution in the West? If there is no such victory in the West, can we build a socialist society and complete the building of it? The Congress answered that we can, otherwise there would have been no point in our taking power in October 1917. If we had not counted on giving the finishing blow to our capitalists, everyone will say that we had no business to take power in October 1917. The opposition, however, affirms that we cannot finish off our capitalists by our own efforts. That is the difference between us. There was also talk at the Congress of the final victory of socialism. What does that mean? It means a full guarantee against the intervention of foreign capitalists and the restoration of the old order in our country as the result of an armed struggle by those capitalists against our country. Can we, by our own efforts, ensure this guarantee? That is, render armed intervention on the part of international capital impossible? No, we cannot. That is something to be done jointly by ourselves and the proletarians of the entire West. International capital can be finally curbed only by the efforts of the working class of all countries, or at least of the major European countries. For that, the victory of the revolution in several European countries is indispensable. Without it, the final victory of socialism is impossible. What follows then in conclusion? It follows that we are capable of completely building a socialist society by our own efforts and without the victory of the revolution in the West, but that, by itself alone, our country cannot guarantee itself against encroachments by international capital. For that, the victory of the revolution in several Western countries is needed. 
The possibility of completely building socialism in our country is one thing. The possibility of, our, of guaranteeing our country against encroachments by international capital is another. In my opinion, your mistake and that of your comrades is that you have not yet found your way in this matter and have com confused these two questions. With comradely greetings, J. Stalin. P.S. You should get hold of the Bolshevik of Moscow, number three, and read my article in it. It would make matters easier for you. J. Stalin, February 10, 1926. And there are a couple of endnotes here. Um, there's a reference to the speech in question, which is resolutions and decisions of CPSU, Congresses, Conferences, and Central Committee Plenums, uh, Part 2, 1953, pages 73 to 82. And the magazine Bolshevik, number three, is dated February 15, 1926. This was Stalin's work concerning questions of Leninism. Uh, Bolshevik was a theoretical and political magazine, the organ of the Central Committee, which began publication in April 1924. Uh, since 1952, it has been pu published under the title Communist, with a K. Okay, so that's the end of the audiobook. Uh, what do you think? What do you make of this? And what do you make of this sort of ideological split? Or I don't know if you would call it a, a split over questions of just tactics and strategy. Um, or, you know, what the future of building socialism in the USSR looked like in terms of major challenges and what uh, the Communist Party really needed to address and what they could, you know, let slide, what were critical questions for building socialism and then guaranteeing the existence of their country against uh, repeated intrusions um, from international capital. You know, of course, today in 2020, we live in a world where the Soviet Union, of course, was destroyed in the early 90s um, due to capitalist sabotage in, in large part. There were many um, factors surrounding that. But uh, the, the main point being the people of the USSR overwhelmingly did not want the USSR to be destroyed, yet it was anyway. Um, and we live in a world where the remaining socialist countries, uh, Cuba, Laos, Vietnam, uh, North Korea, and China, uh, most of them have had at least some kind of capitalist incursion. Maybe North Korea arguably has held out the most against um, the capitalist West. But we see Vietnam, uh, which was really dependent on the USSR for foreign aid and other supplies and, and support, uh, when the USSR was destroyed, they had to open up to the West for um, financing of, so that they could keep building industry. Apparently, things weren't working out with them in China, um, which is something that I hope to go into in, in this channel a little bit more. China's apparent lack of uh, solidarity among socialist countries, I think, is a major issue um, that, that should be explored. Um, at times, that's not a universal thing, but we can see certainly some key examples of it here and there. But um, point being, when countries like Vietnam had to open up uh, to the West uh, for, for financing so that they could build their industry, um, it came with strings attached. It meant that they had to take predatory loans. It meant that they had to do various things. That's a country that is still headed by Marxist-Leninist politicians and people who are still ideologically Marxist. So they're still trying to take their country in the direction of socialism but, you know, having to work with um, capitalists for some of that financing is a setback. It means that, uh, you know, they've had to take some strings. They've had to allow more exploitation than, than they would like to do, ideally. But they have no choice. The Soviet Union, that massive economic engine of the Soviet Union, isn't there. Um, the same could be said of China. Uh, and, of course, there's a debate among Western leftists, you know, as to... Are they just letting in a, a minimal amount of capitalist uh, investment and, and influence in order to build up Chinese production, as is the Chinese government's position? Or are they really just secretly selling out? You know, that's an ongoing controversy that, again, is a, uh, an issue I'd like to explore on S4A. If you have evidence-based thoughts on any of these topics or about this audiobook, please leave them in the comments. You can find us at youtube.com slash C slash socialism for all Facebook, facebook.com slash socialism for all. Please make sure to like, share, comment. Uh, all of that helps to uh, boost the channel, subscribe um, so that more people see it. 
Uh, you can also find us patreon.com slash socialism for all. The names of our current patrons are on the screen. Much thanks. You can support this channel for as little as a dollar or two a month or five, all the way up to over a hundred dollars a month. Uh, I'll just say all of the support is very encouraging to have four patrons uh, at the present time. The more support I get, the more time I can devote to this. I